Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I am talking about part two of Claire Weeks's Facing Philosophy. So you know she has face, accept, float, and let time pass as four elements of her philosophy. And last episode, 987, I talked about dismantling that anxiety a little bit and actually telling you a little bit about Claire Weeks and her facing philosophy. But today, we want to go a little bit deeper and talk about the actual practical steps in facing anxiety. So if you missed the first part of our discussion, be sure to listen in to episode 987. That was the episode just before this one. There should be a link for that in the show notes if you missed it, or just go back to 987 and check that out so you can have a better understanding of this whole idea of facing in dealing with our anxiety. There is a lot to talk about as far as what we can do. But I also think it's important to understand that one of the big things about facing your anxiety is that we have a real self-awareness in recognizing our specific anxiety triggers. When we do that, when we face what is going on, we become aware And we become able to recognize our anxiety triggers because otherwise, you know how a lot of us, and I include myself in this for years and years, I just kept trying to make myself feel better. You know, I just wanted to make it go away. Okay, how can I feel better right now without any understanding that things I was doing to make myself feel better in the moment were actually feeding my anxiety and having it go deeper and bigger. So if we can learn to face and have the self-awareness, we can deal with these things that are going on inside us. And today we can talk about the practical steps of facing and how these triggers that we have, common triggers, we all have our own little recipe of triggers in our lives. And how they are manifesting in our daily lives and what we can do about it, what we can do to not do what I was doing in the past, making myself just feel better for the moment, but actually having that anxiety dig deeper and deeper into me. So let's identify some common triggers and understand how they manifest in our daily lives. This is crucial for implementing some of what can be considered gradual exposure, which is a key component of Claire Weeks's approach to facing anxiety. So let's talk about some of the examples of the common triggers and how they manifest first one I want to bring up are social situations. Now, actually, let me take a step back and say you may not have any of these triggers that I'm going to talk about, and you may have a lot of them. You may have your own that I didn't bring up. I'm just going to talk about some really common ones, but don't feel like just because I didn't mention your particular triggers that you're dealing with something else. No, there are a multitude of things that can be going on. I am just talking today and using examples of common triggers. First one up again is social situations. So anytime that we are in a social situation, anxiety can be triggered 
by having to be interacting with other people. This whole socialization, such as being at parties or gatherings, or if you have to do some public speaking. And for many people, it's even just talking on the phone because they're interacting in a way where they feel that pressure, that social pressure. And when this comes up, if this comes up for you, you could be experiencing social anxiety and you may want to avoid events. You may want to avoid talking on the phone. You may want to avoid going to parties and gatherings. And if you do those things, you may be experiencing heightened nervousness. You could be having the sweating, trembling. You could be someone who blushes or has a physical reaction to a social situation. These are some of the things that can come up with that social anxiety. The next one up is driving or traveling. This is super common also. And this is anxiety related to driving or traveling. And your stress can be triggered by the fear of accidents or traffic or unfamiliar environments, driving in the dark, being stuck in traffic is a big one. And so what happens is you can get an avoidance of driving or traveling because what's happening when you do that is you're noticing you have increased heart rate or you've had a panic attack. If you've ever had a panic attack driving, whoa, that can really shut down the ability to get behind the wheel for a while until you begin to come forward and what face this. So if you are getting any of these anxious or nervous feelings when you are traveling or driving, you know that you are dealing with a trigger and you can overcome it. And we're going to face it. We're not going to say, no, we don't drive anymore or no, we don't drive to those places anymore. And it may not be right away. You're probably not going to just jump on that highway or freeway where you had your panic attack. I understand that. And Claire Weeks isn't talking about that. And I want to continue on now with some more of the triggers and see if they make any sense to you. And then I want to get into what we can do, because I know that's why you come here. You want to know what to do, but I don't want you to just take the information in. Don't just hear me and go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Aha, I get it. No, we have to actually put our boots to the ground, get out there and do these things. So let me continue on here. I'm totally going off base. (laughs) I want to get back to some of the triggers so you know what I am talking about. Health concerns can be one. You could be triggered and have worry about illness, doctor visits, medical procedures. You could be having excessive worry about physical symptoms and avoiding things like medical checkups or having heightened anxiety leading up to or during medical appointments. And a lot of this I find is the leading up to it. Most people are okay once they get there, except you may have high blood pressure once you get in there because you have gotten yourself all worked up about getting there. But this is a big one. So health concerns is one of those triggers. So is workplace stress. Our workplace, oh my goodness, it can be so many different things from deadlines to presentations or your performance evaluation or your performance every day at work dealing with particular people. And as you can see, now we can see a little social anxiety coming in there because you have to interact with other people. So these are not clear, black and white. They're very much overlapping and one can lead in to another. But what happens when we have workplace stress? We can end up having things like procrastination actual avoidance of tasks, or we could have all those physical symptoms, headaches, stomach discomfort, whenever we are thinking or relating to our work. 
Next up is a trigger of uncertainty. And that can manifest in situations where the outcomes are unpredictable or ambiguous. Uncertainty, oy, no one with anxiety does well with uncertainty. It's just that big unknown floating out there in the future. And as we know, most minds are built with a negative bias, human minds, but When you have anxiety, it's like you have the negative bias on steroids. We immediately go in the future. If there's anything we don't know about, it's obviously a big problem. And so we do not like uncertainty when we are anxious. This can make you feel like you are constantly worried or seeking reassurance from others or you are avoiding situations that have uncertain outcomes. Another trigger is conflict or confrontation. Anxiety related to conflict or confrontation can be triggered by disagreements, arguments, difficult conversations. And now you see how work can come in here because often we are needing to hold our ground with a solution that we found or a reason that we did a particular thing in a particular way. And this can trigger our anxiety, leading to us having physical symptoms like the increased heart rate or sweating during confrontations. Or we could end up with a persistent fear of being in such situations. And again, now that pulls in the uncertainty that I just talked about, right? So again, you see these are not black and white, and we have a lot that feeds another trigger. So this is where it becomes extremely important for us to be facing these, because in our facing these triggers and our anxious symptoms and sensations, We have awareness, self-awareness, and it is when we are unaware, we cannot do anything about it. So let's get back to some more triggers. Performance anxiety. This is related to, you know, it could be academics or it could be your career, sports, or artistic endeavors. You could have that unending procrastination. You just can't get it done. And you're holding back because of this trigger of performance anxiety. You could have the fear of failure, or you can end up with physical symptoms like trembling or nausea before or during a performance, feeling like you cannot go and perform. So that's a lot of triggers. That's a lot of bad news, right? And we can identify with some, maybe even all of those. Or like I said earlier, you may have your own triggers that I have not mentioned. And if you want to send in some questions for me about them, please do send your email to anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. I'd be happy to mention some more about that on a show with your question. But let's get into now some gradual exposure. That's what Claire Weeks was talking about with her facing. We are going to identify our triggers. We are going to identify our problems and the specific situations or the stimuli that trigger our anxiety. We can begin to actually get down to the exact nature of a social situation or an aspect of driving that causes our distress. But we cannot do that if we are not facing our anxiety. The next step would be creating a hierarchy, looking at the triggers from least to most anxiety inducing. Now, this might not be easy, and it may be hard for you to think about, it's okay. It's okay. That's just another way of facing our anxiety. But this list can help us establish a structure that we can see where we can gradually expose ourselves to distressing situations in our lives, starting, of course, with the least distressing. The point is, is that we will be facing distressing, difficult, 
uncomfortable situations. And that's what we need to do to train ourselves and keep facing our anxiety. And the third step would be gradually approaching, facing and gradually exposing ourselves to the least anxiety provoking situation on that list that we created. And this could involve spending a short amount of time in a difficult situation. It could be that we are going to take a little bite of this great big elephant we call anxiety. We can eat this entire elephant one bite at a time. And we don't have to be afraid of it. We are going to go into it saying, yes, this is a difficult situation. I feel uncomfortable and I expected this to happen. Next up, we're going to practice anxiety management techniques during our exposure, during our time with the difficult situation. And what is that? We're going to pay attention to our breathing that we've been practicing all along. We're going to have a longer, slower exhale and relax our muscles even though we are in the difficult situation. We're going to practice our mindfulness. We can actually use our positive self-talk using our mantra. These things help us cope with the anxious feelings as they arise so that we can stay in the situation and not need to exit. Next step is to continue progressing through these difficult situations, tackling more or harder situations as your confidence builds, because you're going to carry every time you sit through a difficult situation that you used to run away from, you're going to carry that in your back pocket and you're going to recall, I did this before, I can do it again. And believe me, this is how we build confidence. We don't scare ourselves. We're not, like I said, jumping on that exact freeway that we just had a panic attack on. No, we back it off and we start with smaller things and build our confidence. The goal is to desensitize ourselves to the anxiety triggers over time. And finally, we're going to celebrate our achievements. Not only are you going to carry those achievements in your back pocket, but you're going to celebrate these small victories along the way, recognizing that progress reinforces the effectiveness of gradual exposure, and it will actually also boost your motivation to do more, to keep going. So by systematically facing anxiety triggers through gradual exposure, and I know this is going to take time, and I know you're thinking, oh no, but that's okay. We're only talking about the first step with Claire Weeks's work. We're going to go through all of it eventually. So don't lose hope. You have to keep faith. You got to keep a good heart open to the fact that you can do this. Because believe me, if I could do it, you can do it too. Because systematically facing our anxiety triggers through this gradual exposure, we can build resilience, we can reduce our avoidance behaviors that kept us stuck, and we can gain a sense of control over our anxiety, and it will no longer be lingering around us all day, every day. This approach aligns with Claire Weeks' emphasis on acceptance, non-resistance, and understanding that anxiety is a temporary state that can be managed effectively. I hear from a lot of my clients that they gain confidence and strength from Claire Weeks' work and that they are very happy to know that I understand her work and employ it with our coaching work that we are doing together. It's like we have a common language. And so again, if you haven't read any of her books, I encourage you to read Hope and Help for Your Nerves. It will be a wonderful tool in your tool belt. And now for today's quote. 
Facing anxiety is an act of courage. Embrace the discomfort, for it is the path to healing and peace. And that's from Claire Weeks. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com.